constantly fell into the trap of thinking every piece had to be perfect and every piece had to be better than the last piece. And again, because I was seeing some mild success with a few pieces, I just kept putting all this weight on my shoulder. Weight I did not need. Hello folks, I'm Tyler Edlin and I'm happy to be here today to talk about the last 10 years of my professional career where I faced some sort of setback, what I learned from them, how I grew and adapted from them, and what my takeaways were. So yeah, buckle up, it's going to be a little bit of storytelling. Of course, I'm going to time lapse and show the process for this painting right here. That's going to be part of the fun, of course. And the other bit of info I wanted to drop is that, yeah, my Instagram account was hacked and deleted, as I mentioned in the last episode. So I'm going to put that new one right here. Lots of tips and tricks and inspiration will be coming through uh, that uh, account. So happy to have you back on there as well. And I did put a poll up, right? You guys voted on these two topics. Both were really popular. So the follow up on this video will be a little more business related. So stay tuned in. Hopefully next week or so, we're going to talk about how to price your creative work. And if there's specific questions for that upcoming video as well, you can leave those below. Let's begin. All right, so finally getting into the setbacks that helped me grow. Let's go way back to 2011. I lost my first studio gig. I got my first kind of big deal of a job. I was at a small uh, sort of indie studio called Hit Point, and I did loads of hidden object game art, a ton of the um, like kind of puzzle game. I did some puzzle designs, a lot of background painting, for like very casual games. Uh, it was good. And I think I was rolling with that for about two years of very steady income. Of course, I got very comfy in there. I was basically contracted for six hours a day. So I worked six hours a day for them, five days a week. And it was more than enough to pay my bills. But um, I lost it. It wasn't on any kind of behalf of the work I was producing. Their budgets were changing, their projects were changing, their funding was changing, you know? So it, it was just one of those things. So I was out, had no idea what to do with myself, and you just gotta get back into the game. You know, it's kind of like getting dumped out of a long relationship. It was rough, I was very, you know, I was depressed for a little while. It, it did hit me hard. Uh, the best thing that came out of this was that I started YouTube. I started this very channel a little later that year, a few months, with, with just no particular goals. I just wanted to kind of put some stuff out there and kind of have fun. I had to get back into the swing of creating art kind of for fun again, and that's where that all started. And the real kind of takeaway here is I, I had to, to learn how to chase my ambition badly. Finally back on the horse in 2012, I started to gain traction with a combination of both, you know, the YouTube channel was doing pretty good and my DeviantArt. I think on DeviantArt at the time I had like, you know, 30k followers and um, like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, almost like a half a million page views and stuff, which I used to be one of their big metrics back then. So I was enjoying it for better, <laughs> for better words, kind of creating mediocre art. But what with that happens, and even with mild success, again, it's easy for imposter syndrome to start to sink in. And, and this is what I really began to feel for a few years here. I just really began to never feel satisfied with what I could do and that my work should be and, and could be better. I was starting the neglect you know making mistakes i was aiming way too much for perfection constantly fell into the trap of thinking every piece had to be perfect and every piece had to be better than the last piece and again because i was seeing some mild success with a few pieces i just kept putting all this weight on my shoulder weight i did not need and again on top of that because of youtube and everything i was starting to get considered an expert in some circles and I was really just being scared as well of being uh, you know exposed as uninformed I was 
really tiptoeing around and often avoided talking about something just because I didn't know every detail. That's very unrealistic as well. Eventually, I just came to terms with that uh, we can learn a, a lot about something, but we're never going to really know everything. And that's okay. Know yourself, work hard in silence, and let any of that success or work eventually speak for itself. Skip a few years now uh, to uh, 2016, kind of had another setback. I was newly married, we were settling down, trying to make long-term plans to essentially establish a family, and I started declining a few kind of mid to higher level game jobs. This was super shaky and I was not very confident about it at the time uh, because I was closing doors left and right and who knows where I was essentially kind of shooting myself in the foot. I did consider it a big setback, but I was trying to find a place that would mutually work for my family. Eventually, the good that came out of this was that I launched the mentorship program so that I could essentially start recapping some of this loss of income on a professional level in, in the form of teaching, which I was already kind of doing on YouTube anyway, so it made sense. Uh, the takeaway here is listen to your inner voice and really just keep expanding on your horizons. Now, in 2017, this I don't want to I got to careful how I label this. My first child was born. Now, this was 100% planned, but right as someone that is an independent creator that runs and operates on a business out of their house, this is going to be a serious obstacle and setback to kind of deal with on a business level, right? Family level is great, but yeah, I I struggled and still struggle to balance all of that out but it was a turning point right uh, you lose a lot of time I'm sure any any of you parents out there can relate to this uh, trying to stay at the same level of uh, productivity consistency is a day-to-day -day struggle but uh, what I had to do here was learn to be much more efficient with my time. That was my takeaway because honestly, after my child was born, I became a lot more productive. I started producing way more output, you know, videos, uh, content, work. That actually never took a hit. What took a hit was my free time and whatever time I would just waste doing absolutely nothing, which I don't even know what filled that gap at this point i it's just what happened what was i doing with myself because i'm just producing more and more and i and i think again from the other parents that i speak to in this field you you just kind of adapt and you go full throttle when you're working and you just become a workhouse so now everything i do is fairly calculated better or worse to <laughs> to kind of put a label on that i i'm just really careful and execute like what I need to do with a priority list every day. Now in 2018, I, I did the, f for the first time ever, I actually was looking at some freelancing studios, some ones that I, I kind of like the work to and that were starting to branch out. And I actually applied or I went out of my way to like, see if there's any I tried to gauge interest to see if there was any kind of potential employment opportunities and in this case the big one uh, for me was one pixel brush right I, I love what uh, Shetty does over there at his work but you know it turns out I, I talked to him we went back and forth for a little while and it wasn't the best fit I, I respect the hell out of that but I just I wasn't in a point I guess where I wanted to pivot that much and you know kind of take directions uh, kind of like that. Maybe it's just me being stubborn. But the 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 good thing that came out of that was I kind of just made my freelancing life a little bit more of an art house, right? I kind of took on Brush Saw Studio as like, you know, I can, I'm getting older, I can run my own studio. And I started to just kind of do that on a fairly, very minimal low level of a, from a management standpoint. Uh, my takeaway from this is you have to believe in what you do and like you just have to be all in on that sometimes 
I'm still learning and I'm still growing with that. But again, it's okay to when things don't go your way. And there are ways to kind of get some gains out of that. Now in, let's say, what are we up to? Like 2019, 2020, even though I was doing this, I wasn't ready to fully kind of commit to it. So one kind of big setback, I was I was turning down much bigger opportunities. We're, we're talking studios like BioWare, uh, Activision. Um, I just, I wasn't at a level where I was prepared to manage uh, an account kind of that big yet. But what I did do, because I mean, bills were rising and I know I had you know a child and there's lots of daycare and stuff involved with that. But essentially what I ended up doing was just starting the Patreon, right? And and that's, again, to help pay for that child care. And then I, I actually put the excess money, the extra money from Patreon. I used that to hire the very supporters that joined up into that. And I try to give them some of the jobs as well. So that, again, started to play into the Brush Saw Studio as that was building up. And it was just, again, these mild little baby steps that kept happening and just, I kept expanding, right? The horizons, closing doors, other ones always open. And it helps you get creative to find ways to open new doors. So the, the bottom line takeaway with this is just learn to say no to things that don't align with your own goals or say no to things that, you know, you know, you'll just perhaps be a little in over your head, you know, at, at a current point. So a big 2020 setback uh, for me was that I come to the realization that I didn't learn more 3D and more workflows when I actually had the time. And I'm just struggling all the time to kind of fit time to learn that in. And essentially, it's just costing me more money at this point where I'm constantly hiring out people to do some of that work that I'd love to know more about. I think it's good hiring out that sort of work because people can do it better and faster than I can. So it's good from a business standpoint and it creates a lot more opportunity costs to help me, you know, keep managing and, and tr you know, doing other prospects. But yeah, it's still at the end of the day, I'd, I'd love to learn some of that so I can work on personal projects, uh, you know, on a much kind of higher tier with more, a wider tool set, you know, available. The takeaway here is to, to maximize your time, try to balance it, realize the, like the older you get to the less and less free time most of us tend to have. And that essentially there's the, yeah, everything's going to take twice as long as you ever plan to. And this is true to a lot of creative work in general, especially when it comes to budgeting. So maybe again, we'll talk about that next week. My last setback happened, right? Like three, three weeks ago, I think now my Instagram account was deleted. I had 50 K followers. It was okay. Had 700 posts, loads of things saved and cataloged within that app. Shit happens. It, it, it sucked. Uh, but it, you know what? My family was healthy. I had this account. I have other social media accounts. I'm not, you know, gone from the universe. Nobody tried to cancel me. So the takeaway is you just got to be resilient. Keep moving keep pivoting, adapt, you're going to find a way. Now I relaunched that a little bit of a different take on it, but I'm really happy with it, how it's going. And I'm not sour about it. I'm not going to give Instagram a dime or Facebook a dime to, to pay or boost accounts. I never did, but happy to still be creating content, of course. So just don't rely on, you know, one source of income or one one account, one media, one, whatever it is, because you have to have multiple logs on the fire in case something d does go right very, very poorly for you and it's out of your control. And the other thing with the Instagram situation is that it, it actually is actively making me use the platform a little bit differently the second time around. I'm putting more conscious effort into the content since I'm essentially reposting, you know, some odd 700 worth of posts. I just don't want to regurgitate that. So it's incentivizing me to really add another layer of value to thing in the form of inspirational quotes and, and tips, break down little strategies and sort of things. So I'm trying to add value It's something that maybe I, I just quite put in, didn't put enough effort into uh, originally. And it's encouraging me to use the some of the other features, things like the reels, you know, use more stories. And so I'm really 
actively trying to improve my presence on that platform as a result. And and the grand takeaway from all of these things at the end of the day, I think, is that it, it really just is willpower that is going to push you through all of these sort of scenarios. You, you really do have to want it and you you have to have it, you know, kind of come from within as well. And if you know yourself, of course, to have like a specific kind of creative drive, if you found your inner voice as an artist, you're going to align yourself with different sorts of projects that you feel, you know, you're going to be a good fit for, or that you're not going to have to work, you know, against your own natural style and, and personal like creative beliefs to kind of change and adapt. You know, and, and in some of those studio jobs, that's what happened. Like, oh, if you want to work for us, you have to work like such and such an artist or your work has to look like them. I've been doing this long enough. I don't want to be, you know, necessarily like somebody else. I want to I want to do me. I want to get better at being me. And if that means not kind of creating like someone else, I'm I'm fine with that. So, right. It's all about kind of compromising, too, at the end of the day. But I do think overall getting just an abundance of experience, at least earlier on, so you can kind of help find that inner voice of your own. Th that's how you do it, right? Is purely through raw experience. But a lot of these points, again, as I've been talking about, you know, creative drive, willpower, these sort of things, definitely uh, check the last video I put out because I talked more about it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if, if any of you have personally gone through any of these setbacks. Let me know if you have other kind of setbacks that perhaps you experienced. I, I know there's a ton out there. I never let relationships or family in that kind of respect really get in the way of things. Uh, I, you know, everyone's health is pretty good too over here. Didn't have a house burned down or anything, but I'd be really interested to know what kind of setbacks you guys experience as well. Let's talk about it in the comments below. Take care.